Morning folks. Today's just kind of another day of kind of putting things together down here in the goat barn. Oh, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but the wife's been wanting a little bit of hot water. Just a couple gallons to, you know, wash some milk lines out and stuff at times. So I'm installing a mini, mini water heater today. A couple gallon water heater that, uh, pretty energy, energy efficient, but should work well here in the goat barn. So follow along, we'll get this little Bosch installed. So as I start to um, open this up, I realize real quickly that it's actually a pretty easy design. It's just got a little metal clip that holds it to the wall, and um, it's literally got a hot and a cold and uh, a pressure relief on it. And the pressure relief is on the top, um, just like a water heater, and the hot and cold are on the top. This one is only like a couple gallons, so when you have these smaller ones like this that don't, you know, hold a lot of water you basically have um, kind of like a mini on demand because they can heat it so quickly and work so easily with it. So I think that's good. The brand that I chose to go with is the Bosch. And I, I guess I went with it, number one, because of the physical dimensions. I didn't want it to stick out from the wall very far. Um, it only does two and a half gallons, but you can get bigger ones. Um, this is electric. Um, I think it uses 1,400 watts of power, so about 12 amps. And you can mount this on the floor, you can mount it on a shelf or on a wall, or you can put it in a cabinet. So I found this to kind of be the one that I wanted to go towards, so to speak. As far as settings, this one does not have a digital display. Um, you can see the power amperage there. Um, it does not have that. So you just get kind of a, a low ideal and high and the high um, all the way to the top and the low all the way to the bottom. But the ideal has a couple click settings in it. This is the back where you put the wall mount into. So I'm just going to haul down my tools so I can kind of get this going here. And um, it, hopefully the install will go actually pretty good. I kind of um, did it up in the shop at the beginning and unboxed it so that I could figure out the fittings. Um, down here in the goat barn, everything is, I forget the term, but it's garden hose fittings. So everything is is plumbed that way. This particular little unit here is like a half inch, uh, what is that, National Pipe Thread NPT. So it wasn't too hard. I just had to go to Menards and get myself two fittings that went from, uh, they, they were female fittings on one end for a half NPT fitting. And then on the other end was garden hose thread. And then I could, I could hook right up to it. So you can see the goats are in here. They're, they're doing great. They're kind of relaxing. Wondering why I'm coming in with this, you know, large white object over to the wall area. So this is where I kind of want to mount it right there. Um, I got these fittings. Like I said, these are from Menards. They, they weren't very expensive. And then I bought, um, uh, washer and dryer. Oh, excuse me. It's just washer hose. I bought two of them. I bought the, um, steel covered ones. They're, they're like a, like a black rubber and they've got the, the steel wrap on them for protection. And I got myself some Teflon tape and I'm basically going to do like the instructions said, I'm going to Teflon the top of these. I'm going to thread on the half inch to garden hose adapter. And then that garden hose thread is the same that's on the, um, the hoses. So then that'll go, I'll just hand thread those on and then that'll go down under the sink and, and basically um, go right into the cold line or let me say that again, it'll go into the hot line that I want to be hot and the cold will come from the, the cold side of the sink. So it should be good. In the past, only the cold side has really worked. So now the hot side will be hooked up and it'll work. It, it should be really good. As far as um, energy efficiency, these things claim they're like over like 98% efficient. So we'll see. Um, hopefully it doesn't suck a lot of electricity. As far as quantity, two and a half gallons, my wife and I talked about it. You're not going to take a shower with two and a half gallons. But if you just want to wash something in the sink with some warm water, it should be plenty to, to get you to that point. So nothing bad there. So that's the good news. I did have to move one coat rack stand. Um, certainly that was a little bit of a pain in the butt. I had to move some um, uh, boxes and pails and stuff out of this corner to make it fit. I didn't want to put it too high up on the on the wall because I wanted to be underneath the electrical that's currently there. That way, if this thing ever does bleed or 
need to be drained or leak water, it'll be above the electrical in the barn. So if you're wondering why I didn't put it up higher, um, that's why. I can't put it underneath the sink because the sink is literally over the ground spigot that comes up. Um, if you guys recall, this area I had a ground spigot in and I positioned the barn so it would come up right where we needed it to. And I actually wanted it to be just off to the side of the sink, but it came up right underneath the sink. But that's fine. We made it work. Um, the black object there you see behind me, um, that is the um, dehumidifier, and this will still fit just right above the dehumidifier perfectly. So I'm really happy with, with this thing's size um, for doing this. I think a lot of people actually use these in motorhomes, but again, I've seen these things added to underneath sinks when you get a long distance to your kitchen sink, to give your kitchen sink a boost in temp. Um, I've seen these things, like I said, in multiple barns, particularly I've seen them in a couple dairy buildings where, you know, they want to wash hands just like this. So it just takes a little bit of effort to get this done, folks, and then it installs pretty quickly. Cost-wise, um, you know, what it is, everything costs more these days. I certainly wish it was a little bit cheaper, but um, a unit like this to get to my door was about 180 bucks. Eh, I guess... You know, maybe that is a fair price. It just seems expensive for nowadays, but what isn't expensive these days? So here I'm just trying to kind of fit it on the wall. I found a couple studs there so I know exactly where the studs are. I'm going to put their little plate on. It's got um, kind of two adjustable screw holes and then two solid screw holes. Because I've got it in studding, I'm going right into the two solids because I don't even really need to adjust it. Once I make sure I've got it screwed in level, just a matter of hanging it at that point. Um, I'm thinking about bringing a power line right down to this, but for right now, I'm going to use an appliance cord, three foot extension on it, just to make it reach the outlet. That's probably not the best idea for any major appliance, but this is a small appliance, and appliance cords are, are rated a lot higher than, than most, so I feel that that, that, should, be, that should be really sufficient. Um, I had to make sure these things didn't leak. Um, believe it or not, I had one one darn tiny leak uh, once I got the thing put together, but it wasn't anything major. Um, as far as the type of hoses, I, I got these um, washer hoses that have the 90 degree bend on them so that it could come right off the unit 90 degree style and then go right down the side. That was really nice because, um, again, I've already got the copper that I'm putting on at the end that goes right down the side. So... Having both go down the side, that was that was fantastic. So I was real appreciative that that was able to be done that way. So basically, I took the um, hot out of the water heater and went right to the sink. And then I took the cold and spliced it in the middle of the cold line. And it wasn't, it wasn't that hard. I've got this nice, like I said, steel cabling. Um, this is where it leaked just a little bit at the beginning. I think once the, the washers got... Um, saturated, maybe that's not the right term for rubber, but or neoprene, whatever that is, then things work great. You turn it on, the light comes on indicating that it's running and it's heating, and then it's off to basically start, you know, um, testing the water. Now I had, like I said, a leak or so there. I, I played with it a little bit, back and forth, back and forth. But once I got that done, I got, uh, I got a three-quarter inch and I extended the relief so it comes out and goes down to the ground. That way, if the relief does need to be used, um, I can drain it. Uh, it took just a little bit of cutting this. Once I got it cut, um, it had a 90-degree elbow and a screw-in threaded side because I think it's a three-quarter NPT um, threading on this one. So I put the shark bite on it with the three-quarter end in brass, and I screw that into it, and I put the 90-degree on it, and boom. That's that's all set and done. I didn't have an inspection on this, folks. But from what I can tell from my local codes, this is completely legal. Um, I've got it uh, more than um, two feet away from any electrical outlet, and the electrical outlets are GFCI'd. So uh, we're doing good. This is what it turned out like. No leaks. I'm just checking it here. Kind of time to fire this thing up. Oh, it's, it's actually off. The red light went off, which indicates it's up to temperature and got nice hot water already. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back up to the house quick and come back with a thermometer, and I'm just going to kind of see where I'm at. I do not have it set very high. It's not even halfway up. It's temp thing. I'm shooting for about 100 degree temp water, 
Um, nothing scalding, just, just nice warm water. So I'm just going to use a thermometer here. It should be about 50 degrees in the barn. Yeah, it's getting nice and warm here. So I'm going to basically just fill a cup with it and stick the thermometer in it and see what I get for temp. I'm shooting for about 100 degrees. If I get close, that would be all I'd want. This is 52 in here, and now it went up to 95, 96. Looks like it's going to stop somewhere around 96, so I'll probably turn it up just a little bit more. But this is exactly, exactly what I wanted, folks. I mean, I'm going to put it here into the ideal. It kind of clicks into this ideal setting. It just, it, there you go. And see the light turned on, indicating it's, it's heating again. Great, so it kind of locks itself in there. Perfect. So this is probably where I'm going to end up running it. I'll have nice two and a half gallons of hot water when I need it. Um, nice, efficient um, little device. I'm real pleased, folks. I think this will really work well in our goat barn. If you got uh, at least a 15 amp breaker, you should be able to put one of these in too. Thanks, folks.